air pollution has been linked to miscarriage risk. I'll discuss the latest research today coming up. Hey everyone, Dr. Wesley Davis back with you again today. I make weekly YouTube videos giving you the best evidence-based information to help you have the best possible outcome for you and your baby. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. The list of adverse pregnancy outcomes associated with air pollution continues to grow. I've previously discussed research linking the risk of air pollution with autism spectrum disorder, fetal growth restriction, stillbirth, preeclampsia, and preterm birth. New research from the University of Utah shows there's an increased risk of miscarriage when there's higher levels of air pollutants. Let's talk about the study. The University of Utah examined all patients who presented to the emergency room from 2007 to 2015 and were diagnosed with a miscarriage. During that time, about 1,400 patients were diagnosed with a miscarriage. They examined the air quality data by zip code of the patient's primary residence and looked at levels of things like nitric dioxide, PM2.5, and other air pollutants to see if there was any association with higher levels when the patient presented with a miscarriage. And the results are quite impressive. For every 10 parts per billion increase in nitric dioxide, the risk of miscarriage went up about 16%. What that means is during the days when air quality was worse, more patients were diagnosed with a miscarriage. It implies that worsening air quality is associated with a higher risk of miscarriage. It's important to emphasize that this study does not prove that air pollution causes miscarriage. However, it adds to a growing body of evidence that links air pollution to adverse pregnancy outcomes. I recommend limiting outdoor air exposure in time of bad air quality if you're pregnant or trying to conceive. Wearing an N95 respirator if you do have to be outdoors could reduce the risk. I'll show a picture of what that looks like up here. I found them on Amazon in a 20 pack for 10 bucks, so not a bad deal. All this leads to the obvious question, what can we do about this and how do we reduce the risk? So about 50% of nitric dioxide comes from auto emissions from the tailpipe. According to the EPA, living within 50 meters of a roadway increases your exposure by up to 100%. Now the next biggest source is coal-fired and natural gas-fired power plants and living near one probably increases your risk as well. Burning wood or kerosene for indoor heat also increases indoor levels of nitric dioxide as does smoking and secondhand smoke. So doing simple things like reducing driving being idle-free, carpooling, and using public transit are all simple measures we can take to reduce air pollution, especially during the winter inversions. I'll put a link in the description you can visit. It's Utah's air quality website for other tips on reducing your emissions. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.